So here we've got a pendulum which is initially hanging straight down at rest. And we're going to push horizontally on this pendulum with a force that's equal to half the weight of the pendulum bob. And the question we're going to solve for here is what is the maximum displacement from vertical that that pendulum is going to reach as it swings sideways? Now there's two ways people approach this problem. The first is using force, which is just wrong, and I'll show you why. And the second is using energy, which is the right way to do this. You see what happens is when people look at this pendulum, they think if you push sideways on the pendulum, at some point the pendulum will in fact reach equilibrium. And if you work through the math here, you can see that at equilibrium, the tension force has a vertical component equal to gravity and a horizontal component equal to our horizontal push force here. So setting the tangent of theta, where theta is the angle between vertical and our, our pendulum, we can say that's equal to our push force divided by the force of gravity. And recognizing that the push force is half the force of gravity, we find the position of equilibrium is 26 and a half degrees from vertical. But like I said, using this method doesn't actually answer this question of the maximum displacement that this pendulum is going to reach. And let me explain to you why. If starting when the pendulum is upright, if we push sideways on this pendulum, the pendulum is going to swing toward equilibrium. And until it actually reaches equilibrium, it's going to continuously be speeding up. So this position of equilibrium right here is not where the pendulum stops. This is the position where the pendulum will be accelerating or speeding up until it gets to that position. After that, it's going to slow down. So in order to solve for the maximum displacement of this pendulum, we need to turn to energy. You see, as the pendulum is pushed to the side, there's going to be some work done on the pendulum, and that's going to be equal to the push force multiplied by however far horizontally we push this pendulum. I'm going to call that some distance d. Now realize, the pendulum starts at rest, and when it gets to its maximum displacement, it's going to finish at rest, which means ultimately all of this work that we put into the pendulum is going to turn into gravitational potential energy. So I'm going to set this work equal to mgh the potential energy of the pendulum. Now realize, this term right here, mg, is the force by gravity. And we decided in this problem the push force is half of the force by gravity. Meaning the height which the pendulum travels upward is going to be half of the horizontal displacement of the pendulum. Now in order to solve what we've come up with here for an actual angle, we need to simply say that this pendulum string has some length l. And looking at how our pendulum sits at its maximum position, we know the distance from our pivot point to the pendulum vertically is going to be given by L cosine theta, which we can actually say is L, this length of the string, minus H, the final height of the pendulum. Or you could say that's L minus D over 2. And much in the same way, looking at this horizontal component of the pendulum's position, we can say L sine theta is equal to D. So substituting this term for L sine theta right in here for D, we get this term. And through a bit of geometry and algebra, we find the maximum angular displacement of this pendulum as it swings backwards is just a hair over 53 degrees. Now it needs to be pointed out, it's not a coincidence that this maximum angular position is twice as large as our equilibrium position. Remember, that pendulum was speeding up for 26 and a half degrees as we pushed it horizontally. It's going to continue moving upward and thus slowing down as it moves farther to the left here. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.